Well, hi, fellas. <laughs> well, hi, fellas. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it is Tall Garage. Um, in today's video, we're just going to be walking around, uh, seeing what I've been up to, uh, and some updates on projects here and there. Not nothing too crazy, um, but it's you know winter is coming, so we're trying to get prepared for that. Uh, let me know down in the comments what is your biggest achievement this year. What what is the thing you're most proud of you got done? For me, um, honestly, you know, uh, getting the 300 to where it is has been a pretty big achievement. I'm really happy with that. But uh, even more than that, uh, I'm happy with um, I'm happy. I'm really happy with all the time I've gotten to spend with my family this year. Uh, it's, it's, you know, me and my brother put, uh, spent a lot of quality time together, so that was great. Um, but yeah, so like I said, uh, we're just going to uh, walk around, and I'll show you guys what we've been up to here on Tall Garage. So stay tuned. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, November day, so we're finally going to get the little Rustang into the garage. So uh, it's been a long time coming to this point. Uh, I don't know if this thing's savable because, like, the inside floors are gone. Like, they're just gone. They make new floors, but they're gone. So, we will see. Uh, the engine guys come out of it anyway because I need the bell housing and stuff off, and I might be able to sell the engine, you know. So, yeah, we're gonna get this inside today. I hope it's salvable because, like, oh, this car was look, it looks so good. Like, this is this is perfect, you know. Like, I just black out the bottom a little bit more. Oh, man, it's gonna be the, the greatest shit box ever. All right, fellas, uh, so like I said, this video is really just going to be going on about the shop and getting ready for winter and what we're up to, but uh, the Power Stroke is finally going back together. I don't know if I ever talked much about what we did. I mean, I know you guys seen I was doing the floorboards. We did the floorboards. We had it sandblasted and epoxied and undercoated purple for whatever reason. I guess so it matches the frame, right? Uh, I'll see if I have a picture of it. I'll shoot it in here somewhere. But uh, yeah, we got the uh, the cab back on and all of the bolt holes line up, which is great because the rear cab mount, the cross member was rotted out. So I had to patch in a bunch of new steel and make um, some new holes for the mounts to go into because the new cross member mount was like $300. And that one was in real good shape except for uh, the holes were rotted out. So... But it's all going back together. We're hoping to have it uh, together before snow comes. Uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of work to do, so. But yeah, it's coming along. This was supposed to be the, the tow rig to take us to Notre Dame Nationals last year, but I suppose it'll it'll uh, it'll make it next year, right? Or not last year, this year, but it'll make it next year. So anyway, it's a pretty nice truck. I mean, it's not perfect, but when you're plowing with something, it doesn't need to be perfect, you know. It did. Get, we probably did go a little overboard. What with getting the frame blasted and painted, but it'll, it'll last a lot longer, right? The truck got a bunch of years left in it, so. Uh, we got a new cross member because this one was pretty 
pretty rotted out. I mean, I guess we could have sandblasted it and patched it, but like, look at them two big holes down there at the bottom, right? Like, yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, so that's what's going on right now. Uh, we did have that red Dodge in here. You might have seen that last video. We did an engine swap for a customer. Um, let's see what happened. So, his uh, turbo drain, oil drain, uh, broke somehow. And so instead of the oil going back to the engine, it was just going everywhere else. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he broke the engine. Um, it still ran, but it knocked real bad. Big chunks of stuff in the oil pan. So he got a replacement engine. We put it in for him. He's driving it around. He seems pretty happy with it. I just, you know, next time your engine oil light comes on, you know, you got to be more vigilant. Um, this is the cab that was originally on that frame. Uh, we put that we put that different box and bed on it. This thing is just, I mean, as, if our camera focuses, yeah, this thing was just all clapped out. Uh, but we still need some of the interior stuff, maybe the seat. The doors are in pretty good shape, so we'll probably keep the doors. Um, but yeah, we need like all the wiring stuff out of it for the power stroke. So uh, this is the fuel tank for the power stroke. Uh, this tank had, has like a hole right here, I remember right? Uh, so the tank really wasn't good. So we had it flat bottomed. Um, and we're going to put it in the bed and use it as a fuel tank. So, you know, that's, that's a lot of fuel right there, you know what I'm saying? So that's the fuel tank for the Power Stroke. Uh, we finally, as I said earlier, uh, we got the, uh, the Mustang in the, uh, the garage. And, like, I don't know when we're going to get to it because it's getting really cold, fellas. Like, I mean, it's supposed to be, like, up in the 50s a day, so that's why I'm here doing stuff right now, but... It is getting cold. But first uh, business is getting, well, I'm getting the hood off. And then we're going to get the engine out. And then the bumper and the fenders and all, everything's coming off the car pretty much. Everything. Because the goal here is to see if it's rotted out at the, uh, the shock tower mounts. There and there. Because I guess that's where they rust out. And if it's rusted out there, we're kind of SOL. The car is destined for a parts car or the scrapyard. But if them are okay, then we're just going to buy a full floor pan and put a floor pan in it. Because unfortunately, in the rust belt, um, you flintstone around everywhere. Yeah. So this car is set for a long time. But that's what makes it a good race car. Like I said, they sell a one panel to replace all of the floor pan at once. And then we also need to get that seat mount right there that goes across because it rotted out right there somehow. Uh, but yeah. So, like I said, this, this is destined to be either a parts car or the junkyard or just, you know, a race car, an airship box, just like the Ranger. Like, it's never going to be, it's never going to be nice again, but, you know, we can get it running. Put, like I said, the 300's probably going in here. We'll get her running, put her around, you know, just something to toy around with. Um, yeah, so, man, my phone does not like to focus Hey, I need, I need to get like a GoPro or something. Uh, my brother, this is my brother's truck. It is a 2014 what, F-150. It has the uh, three, was it 3.5 twin turbo EcoBoost thing in it. Motor's junk. No, it runs uh, timing chains and the phasers and this, the front timing isn't happy. So it's been sitting a while. We finally got time to get it in. We're getting all these other customer cars out of here. So hopefully we, he can get to that. I really don't want to mess with it, but, oh, so here is, here is the shop, I don't know, I don't know what to call it. this is going to be my room, that's what this is going to be, I'm going to hibernate in here all winter, uh, we got uh, Hemi HQ set up, so, uh, let's see, these are the cylinder heads they have been gone through, um, apparently, Putting cardboard on the bottom, on the surface, you know, the gasket surface of your head, long term, is a bad idea. Because, uh, like, this one was sealed in the bag. Just like that, as I got it from the machine shop. And, uh, yeah, so, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. I don't want to have it cut again. But we'll have to figure something out. Because I can definitely feel, feel stuff, which I don't like. Maybe just some scotch spray, you know, something that won't take off really material, but we can clean it up. Because I know it's flat, right? 
So with them are the heads for the Hemi. Uh, we'll talk more about this project later. If you're in like the Facebook group and whatnot, I'll talk about a little bit more there. But these are for this is a 241 Hemi. So the heads are pretty much done. Uh, they've had hardened valve seats, uh, intake and exhaust, put in uh, new valves. Um, they're, they haven't really been touched besides that. But I don't need them to be touched. I just need them to run. So uh, these are the rocker stands. And as you can see, they've seen better days. Uh, they're all stuck. Is it, these are not the original ones. I got these off Marketplace. The original ones have been gone for a long time. But these are the original ones. Uh, we got to send them out to have them rebuilt. There's a, I got like three places um, that uh, I've been you know referenced. So I'm going to reach out to each one of them and see uh, who, I guess, who will do it. Yeah, for the best price, right? And then I got uh, the rods that we're going to be using. These are Pankle. Am I saying that right? Pankle rods. These are really, really nice. Um, really nice H-beams. Uh, they're forged. Like, they're just really nice rods. But yeah, we're going to be using the bolts that came with them. And they have, they all came with... Uh, DLC diamond light coated wrist pins so we'll be using them and we'll be getting custom pistons made for these so that would be cool uh, I got half of the bearings for the rods I still need to get f the rest of the bearings and then main bearings but until we have the crank cut I won't know if I need 10 under or what so the crank has been magna fluxed so it's a good crank uh, but everything needs cut Everything, yeah, it just, there's a story to this engine. I'll tell it one day, but every, every one of these needs touched. So the rod journals I'm not worried about because these are Honda, Honda rod journal size. These are like 1.850 and these are 1.937. So it's like 80 thousandths or something ish. Uh, but we'll be cutting them for them rods. The width, the rod width is like almost spot on. Stock rods are 901 and these are like 905. So I don't know if the guy who's going to grind the crank can like just widen up the, the tolerance a little bit or if we got to like grind the rods. But as soon as the block comes back from getting a sleeve and uh, uh, a sleeve and the, all the cylinders are going to get taken out till they clean up. So I know which one is my biggest one. And we can start thinking about custom pistons. So once that comes back, this is going to go out. You know, it's an elephant. One bite at a time, right? So this right here, um, I'm also going to, since we're doing 80,000, I'm going to have them see if we can offset cut it. So we can get more stroke out. Just, I mean, every little bit helps, right? Those rods are 6.2 inches. So they're pretty long. Uh, good rod stroke ratio. Um, let's see. Not important. Not important, not important, bunch of stuff. Uh, the 300 is in here, this is this new home. Uh, we're gonna finish assembly in here. The rest of the parts for it are on their way. So hopefully we'll be getting it together real soon. Like it's all ready to run, it should run as is. Like we don't need a distributor to run except it to be in there to run the oil pump. So we got that. Um, the K-Series is coming in here pretty soon. We're gonna put the K-Series and the Iron Duke right here. I'm going to buy them little four-wheel engine cradle dolly things. Um, I'm going to buy two of them. And we're going to put both of them engines on them. We're going to wheel them in here. And I got a little propane furnace for in here. So I'm going to get like a 100-pound cylinder filled. And uh, and heat this room. So I put this uh, plywood up covering that hole. And I did my best over here. Like There's a little gaff up at the top. You know, but uh, I might put something up there. I don't know. Like, this whole area back here was a mess, so. But it sealed up the best I could for now. And then, like I said, this is the same way. Like, there's a gap at the top. I'll probably fill that at some point. But it should heat pretty well. It, we, we heated it last winter. Um, and it, it was all right. So, I said I'll be spending most of my time in here. But, yeah. That's kind of what I've been up to. Just cleaning, helping my brother and stuff. So, Anywho, but yeah, uh, that's about it, fellas. Uh, like, sorry for no video last week. It just got away from me, man. It was, it was a busy week of work and whatnot, um, which, I mean, that's not really true. I don't really work all that much, you know. <laughs> uh, 
But uh, yeah, so until next time, fellas, uh, thank you, you know, for uh, following. Hmm. Thank you uh, for following me around the shop and uh, seeing what's been going on. And I hope to have some more content uh, out, uh, you know, soon ish, maybe. I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling right now. Uh, how are you? Uh, we're all good here. We're, we're, we're fine. Uh, how are you? Anyway, I'll catch you guys on the next one.